If you're playing Elden Ring and you haven't tried out the Halberd weapons, or if you just really are into arcane builds, then we've got you covered in this video as we're going to go over a very interesting weapon that we think you could find very useful if you are leaning into those arcane builds. So of course, if you do like this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe down below. I'm of course Paradise Central, so let's jump in and talk about the Ripple Crescent Halberd. This is a weapon that's wielded by the young Albanorix. The blade is said to resemble the partial image of a ripple and its attack power scales with one's arcane attribute. It does require 12 strength, 12 dexterity, and 20 arcane. It has decent range as it's a halberd and a flexible moveset, but what makes it so interesting and good is that it has S-tier scaling with arcane, but it has no other scaling attributes. This quite simply means it's perfect for pure arcane builds, such as caster arcane builds that need a main or offhand weapon. You don't have to invest in strength or dex above the minimum required to equip the weapon as going any higher than that isn't going to add to the damage of the weapon itself. So if you are a caster build focused on arcane, this might just be the perfect weapon for your main or offhand. But it doesn't just stop there, because there is no passive effects, no strange damage types, no innate bleed on this, it is in fact a buffable weapon, which means we can use our blood flame to add bleed as well as fire damage, or any of the other buff incantations that work for your build. This quite simply takes it to another level, as if you are going for an arcane caster build, you may be really pumping arcane, maybe also faith as well, and you just don't have the points to go into strength or dex, and that's why this weapon could be perfect for the those particular builds. And even if you aren't going down the caster route and you're just going down a melee arcane build, these weapons still chonk pretty hard and of course have access to the different grease buff items that you can put on the weapon instead of doing an incantation buff. So these are very versatile and are actually just overall quite impressive for a weapon that only scales with one stat. There is however a downside and it's that the Ash of War isn't changeable and is set to spinning slash. It's not terrible but it's just not nearly as good as some of the other skills. You do a slash at your foes as your body spins and additional inputs allow for a follow up attack but overall you won't really be using this that often and even the power stance jump attacks are straight up better at dealing more damage more quickly. So with that downside in mind and with how good the power stance jump attacks do with this weapon, you may want to go into a melee build that utilizes a different halberd as your main hand for the Ash of War and this one as your offhand if you are going down that melee arcane build route. This way you get the best of both worlds with a really good Ash of War while still being able to use this weapon for its pure arcane scaling. I also do like the flavor of the weapon with the link to the Albanorix, the fact that it's pure arcane scaling it all synergizes together, so I do like that about this weapon as well. So now let's talk about where you get it. It is unfortunately a low drop chance from Albanoric enemies that also wield this particular weapon. But don't worry, there's two of them quite near a grace point found at the ruin directly east of the fallen ruins of the lake grace point in Leonia of the Lakes in this area. Essentially what you want to do is spawn at the grace point, run over to them, defeat them, and then either fast travel back and repeat, or if you're taking advantage of the items that raise your discovery, that it raises your drop chance, which we already have a video going over this on the channel, which will be linked in the description, then you can also use something like the silver pickled foul foot. But if you do use that, make sure that you do run back to the grace point in order to not lose the effect of it by fast traveling. But even though the drop chance is quite low, I managed to farm two of these relatively quickly using these different items. So if you guys are using those items to increase your discovery chance, it probably won't take you too long. If you have any weapons that you think are really powerful and people aren't really talking about, let us know in the comments down below and we'll learn together as a community because a lot of people are talking about the same weapons over and over. So I'm looking for these different weapons that are still very good and will still work for different builds as that's what I'm most interested in right now. So let us know in the comments down below. Of course, do drop a like and subscribe to support the video if you found this interesting and the videos that are on screen now, we think you will really enjoy if you did enjoy this video. So why not give them a click, check them out, try it out and let us know what you think once you've watched them.